What is up, everyone? Hope you're having a great day. And as you may know, the people of Pittsburgh love their culture, whether it's sports, food, or even amusement park rides. And the one ride that seems to mean the most to the city is the Thunderbolt. Before I get this video started, I know this video was suggested by someone to me, but I can't find the comments, so if you're out there, thanks for the great suggestion. Now, although Thunderbolt opened in 1968, we gotta go back a little farther, back to 1924 when a coaster called the Pippin opened at Kennywood. The coaster opened four years after the Jackrabbit and three years before the Racers. All three were designed by the same guy, John A. Miller, who made a lot of advancements for coasters. One thing he did was make an early version of the anti-rollback device. And if you don't know what that is, it's that click-clack noise you get when you're going up a coaster's lift hill. It also keeps the trains from falling backwards. Another thing he did, which is even bigger, was invent the upstop wheels. So he got this idea to put not just a set of wheels on the top of the track, but also on the bottom of them. So you don't have to worry about the coaster jumping the tracks. And why is this so important? This means that we went from something like this to this. And the first ride to use this system is Kennywood's Jackrabbit. So Jackrabbit is literally the first ride you can experience airtime on a coaster. But anyway, let me get back on track. Uh, Kennywood went back to our man John four years later, and he created the Pippin, which is more or less just the Jackrabbit, but bigger, and the station was in a different place, and all the turns were right instead of left like the Jackrabbit. But other than that, it had the same amount of drops and a double dip. Now the problem is there aren't that many pictures of Pippin, and there really isn't a POV video of it. So I went over on No Limits and created a pretty accurate version of it. Just enough so you could get a good idea. So the station was right around where the Thunderbolt mural is. Uh, you would leave the station and make this turn. And where the drop is, the Thunderbolt starts. And this part is basically the same as the Thunderbolt today, except you have a tunnel similar to Jackrabbit's at the turn. Same lift hill. Now, but this is where it gets a little different. Today, you make a turn and you drop into that cyclone thing, but on the Pippin, you turn into a double dip. And finally, the ride ends as the same as the Thunderbolt. So the Pippin seemed like a pretty fun ride, although I see why they chose to change it. Uh, having two of basically the same coasters would seem kind of odd in present times. Although, if you enjoy the Jackrabbit, you'd like the Pippin. But you know what? If you like the Pippin, You'll love the Thunderbolt, Kennywood's Fast Track Coaster. Yes, in 1968, what once was the Pippin became the legendary Thunderbolt. Redesigned by Andy Vettel, the Thunderbolt was something else. But it went through many changes since it opened. And the first happening, a year after it opened, on the cyclone after the lift, there was a little airtime hill that you could not kind of see in the commercial, but I've recreated it too, so you can see it better. And now that little airtime here was removed after 1968 to make the ride more comfortable for the guests. Also at this time, uh, the tunnel from the Pippin was still there. But before I get into more Thunderbolt changes, you might be wondering what made the Thunderbolt so popular. Now I would say the Thunderbolt's popularity really started in 1974 when Times Magazine's ranked the top 10 coasters in the world, and at the top of the list was the Thunderbolt, and it was given the title the King of the Coasters. You can see the top 10 list here. Uh, was this a big deal? Probably not, but Kenny Wood ran with it. It would be all over the news, and in advertisements with the name, the King of the Coasters. And for a while, they even had this big mural that had the articles in the top 10 list outside the ride, but this mural was later replaced by this one featuring Kennywood icons, Kenny Kangaroo, Laughing Sal, 
Cowboy Joe, Noah, George Washington, and Joe Magnera. They are all riding the ride, but as you can see, these jackasses aren't following the rules. On the Thunderbolt, you must have a partner. Now, this is so you don't slide around on those insane laterals you get on the cyclone when you smush the person sitting next to you. But wait a minute, I almost missed some guys on the mural. If you know where to look, you can see two guys on the lift hill, and that's none other than Gino and Brian. These guys became famous from a documentary called Kennywood Memories, filmed in 1988. This documentary talks about the park, and they interview the workers and such. But Gino and Brian are two maintenance guys, and they have some iconic scenes in this documentary. First you got the famous, Hey Gino, you alright? The catwalks on a roller coaster are most dangerous on a morning like this, just after a rain. The wet, greasy wood can be like ice. You all right, Gino? Yeah. I'm sure you all right? Yeah. And then you got what local radio station calls the Coaster Centaur. Gino will then get ready to oil the track. He hangs out the front of the train. He locked the lock bar, so this is locked. I just get in here and put my knee against the pad and brace myself. Gino has to make this run twice, once for each side of the track. But if you haven't watched this documentary yet, I highly recommend it and I'll have it in the link below. But now back to some of Thunderbolt's changes. At some point the catwalks on the Thunderbolt were painted blue to give it a red, white, and blue color scheme, but those were slowly phased out. In 1991, Thunderbolt got himself a buddy. A steel fan was introduced and its second drop went through the Thunderbolt. So the supports had to be partly redone to make room for that. But that's not the only changes. At the same time, the tunnel was finally removed so riders could get a good look at the Phantom. Nothing big would change until 1998 when the trains on the Thunderbolt got headlights back that were once on them before. But that same year, two of the trains crashed, damaging a set of headlights. So in 1999, these were moved partially because of the crash, but also because of the wiring was affected by the vibrations of the train. And in 2001, the Phantom got its revenge. And with that, it goes through the Thunderbolt a second time. So another section of the Thunderbolt supports had to be redone. This being the final major change of the Thunderbolt, and that brings us to today. And the Thunderbolt still remains one of, if not the, most popular ride at Kennywood. It is truly cemented in Pittsburgh culture after 50 years. And although it might not be the king of the coasters anymore, it certainly is the king of Kennywood. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please do me a favor. Don't be a jag off and like and subscribe. I know you can do it. But most importantly, have a good day.